Howdy folks, Doc here with Last Best Tool. And uh, the other day I did a video on leveling up your pliers. And what that meant was you started with some basic pliers and then moved to pliers that had, a, you know, specialized features. And that also raised the question of how many features can you stuff into a pair of pliers? Um, oh, before I start, I wanted to mention I was doing some battery work on some cars and uh, this was great. This thing is a, it's a Vim, I'll roll that around so you can see uh, the number there, uh, EDM410 or 410. It's a very long 10 millimeter. And this is the snap-on version. This is an extra long 10 millimeter there, both on these stubby ratchets. This stubby ratchet for battery stuff was just great. I mean, low profile, got into small places. You were able to work on the terminals without, you know, banging into stuff. The difference, however, if you notice where I've got this bolt, you know that battery uh, kind of retention hooks require generally a fairly long um, spin of the t of the uh, the nut, but this factually it actually fits down. You can see all the way because that's fairly deeply recessed, whereas the snap-on is not. It's more conventional, so it hits pretty quick. Whoops, push that through. It hit, hits pretty quick right there. So you can see that this doesn't quite have the reach. It does have the pass through, which you need for that threaded rod that sticks up, but um, I was just impressed. And this is way cheaper, this, this uh, Vim 10 millimeter. But you can see I'm dropping it all the way down. In fact, I should probably measure it. I'll do that in another video. But I dealt with this uh, long 10 millimeter um, socket and it you might think why don't i just use an extension and a regular size anyway this is just really convenient um, gives you a lot of control simple design just thought i'd throw that out another thing i mentioned um, or noted uh, is i actually worked with some fuses and this had been my kind of go-to this little knipex here with the duck bill kind of blades um, really good at grabbing fuses. Very thin profile, as you can see right there. Um, however, I started grabbing these, um, realizing that these were quite good, and they gave a great sight line, and they slid right down where I wanted them. So, kind of fun. You know, I, I told you I'd circle back and get a, uh, or and tell you if I found a use for these. I wasn't sure what I'd do with them, but that actually is a really good use, and they grab you know, all sizes of fuses quite well. You know, larger, medium, and the small ones. Um, these little tiny Knipex uh, still work great, but um, you know, as you can see there, these are the ones that'll travel with me, but for just when I know I'm doing shop work, that's what I started grabbing. And um, What are these? These are the 38, 35, 200s, and they've got this kind of weird dolphin porpoise head. I call these, I think, mechanics pliers. But anyway, that leads me into where I'm headed here, and that's how many different features can you stuff into a plier. Now, when I did the leveling up video, a lot of people said, oh, why don't you just go with the, uh, the twin grip? It's a great plier, and it is, and I absolutely agree. Um, however, in that video, I was talking about moving up levels from traditional pliers, um, which included, you know, starting out with the standard slip joint, which, by the way, I really like slip joint pliers. I think they are great. I've done videos on them. Simple design. Something, though, that is interesting is Snap-on makes a slip joint that has what they call a flank drive jaw, which is really similar but not quite the same as the Knipex, kind of that trapezoid feature. Only they put it into the, the snap-on plier. And I've thought about getting them, and I've um, you know looked at it. The, the snap-on franchisees I've talked to have said nobody wants it. It doesn't work that well. It's expensive. It's limiting. And I thought, that's kind of interesting, um, because Knipex is nailed this uh, trapezoid jaw with their Cobras. So then when they put it into the twin grip, I mean, it just amplified 
what you could do in the traditional kind of slip joint space. Um, so I'm curious if you've got the uh, flank drive kind of trapezoid shaped um, snap-on pliers. But anyway, back to the topic. The question is, how many features can you stick into a plier? So if we look at pliers, this is called a multi-plier or a combo plier. And what it is, is a non-lineman. It has basically um, kind of a wider pinching jaw up front. It's got bolt grabbing here. It's got cutting here. Sometimes they stick other features in the edges of them. Um, great plier. I love it in this teeny weeny form factor. Look at that little guy. Just disappears in my hand. Fabulous plier. But what are our other choices? Well, we can have wavy blades. We can have, you know, pistol grips. This is darn close to 90. We can have a pistol grip here that also has bolt grabbing here, you know, or nut grabbing, you know, a little smaller here, you know, rod grabbing there, the front end grab there, the cutters there, you know, in a 90 degree or in a 45 degree there. Weird bends this direction, so we can have bends in this direction and bends in this direction. So we can do that. If we take a look, here's um, a mild bend in this Orbis slash Knipex. And this one's also got the bolt grabbing, or it's got the cutting, the cutting knives here, the bolt grabbing here, smaller bolt grabbing there. It's got different sort of bar stock grabbing, especially round there. And then it moves out to the traditional tips that we would call probably needle nose. Um, Klein. We've got bolt cutting, we've got wire cutting, we've got wire stripping, and then we've got fairly stout, kind of a kind of a narrowish, needleish nose. It's still pretty beefy, so not quite. Um, I remember when these hybrids came out. I first got this one. I thought, wow, that's so cool that they've really advanced. You know, their their traditional knip or um, Klein wire stripper, you've got bolt cutting, you've got a giant cutting set of knives there, a whole plethora of different um, wire stripping into this lineman-esque monster of a jaw on the front end. I thought that's so cool, but then they came out with it with a better handle and spring-loaded and a lock. Um, and this was my next. It was very similar, um, but a much better presentation. And then um, they came out with the hybrid here. Take this to another level. They've got crimping here. They've got the bolt cutting, screw cutting here. They've got larger knives. They've got the, the basically they cut it down to the, the main stripping that you'd want. You know, you don't need every stripping on something like this, just the, the ones you usually use. And then a much, cross, much larger cross hatched you know, kind of lineman-esque. Here's the Klein lineman here. Love these things, but you can see, you know, there's there's a lot of overlap between those two. So they stuffed a whole bunch of things into this. What else has gone on? Well, we all know that kind of the stuffing has occurred with multi-tools, probably before that Swiss Army knives where people had up in the champion up to 49 different features. I mean, whether or not those were useful features was questionable. And then some bizarre things. I think Wagner made a Swiss Army knife in combination with Victorinox that had like 141 features. I don't know, it was almost a foot, foot thick. I'm totally useless, but a proof of concept. But, you know, this, I don't even know if they make this anymore. This is the Klein multi-tool. What they did is they stuck, you know, pretty beefy blade onto it, um, slotted Phillips in there. But then again, that same hybrid blade, they're really trying to dial that in, trying to get that evolution straightened out. They don't have the bolt cutting, but I actually really like this. It does, I mean, this, is, this part's a little harsh in your hand um, compared to, you know, high quality Leatherman's. But for a good multi-tool that does an awful lot of things, you know, I really liked it. I, I don't know if they still make it or not, but it's pretty cool. Next, well, you can bend the tips, not just, I mean, that's different than a pistol grip that actually changes the angle. 
you know, you can also bend the tip. And if you bend the tip, well, in this case, what do we have? We've got, first of all, the extended reach. Then we've got the bent tip in a needle nose. We have the bolt grabbing various. We've got the stock grabbing. We've got the square stock, which, which uh, is that part there. No cutters. So we've managed to wedge quite a bit in there. Um, snap on in there. Their triple joints um, of their both 47 and this newer one, which is the 46. Um, they've put small cutters in them. They put bolt grabbing. They put cross hatch all the way through um, for kind of a needle nose. That's where they did ideal. What did they do? They threw these monsters. Look at those things. I mean, compare that to this this Klein. I mean, this is all the way there. It's just this super beefy, robotic-like um, front end on these ideals. What do they have? They've got crimping. They've got the uh, knives here. In this case, this is like a Romex cutting. You can do one slice and it not only cuts the sheath, but cuts all of the internal, um, internal wires and strips them as well. This one's the standard stripper, but in this massive, I mean, look at the size of those things. Um, so it's, it's behaving much like a lineman. Um, Knipex has a couple of different variations of their multi kind of wire cutting pliers. You can get different handles. They've got big knives, small knives. They've got wire stripping. They've got bolt grabbing. They've got standard, um, you know, textured, but single crosshatch or single, um, not cross, single uh, hatch um, grabbing there to these little tips. Um, and you can get all sorts of variations there. So I do think the uh, Knipex twin grip is fabulous. It's a different, basically a different concept. What you're doing here is moving towards some multiplier, screw extraction, bolt and nut grabbing, as well as the ability to extend to some fairly large, um, large nuts and a small profile. The way this uh, here is, is slimmed down compared to traditional slip joints really gives it a lot more um, accessibility. You know, so what we're dealing with here is how many features can you stick into a pair of pliers and whether or not that um, that collection of features or even that spe any specific feature really eliminates the need for another pair of pliers. I feel like we're working towards that. We've come really close. This nails everything it does. You know, some others, um, this is pretty good, but you know, if I was really working with some certain bar stock, yeah, this is great if that's what's in my hand, but there are better, better tools for it than this Knipex here. But having this reach and having that and having that, you know, maybe a cutter would be nice too, might eliminate some. I'm not trying to cut weight here. I'm trying to explore the evolution of pliers, but basically what we're looking at, I mean, if you look at these two here, you're talking about the potential for a, a, a new revolution in pliers. If we put everything on the table and say it's all up for grabs, there are no more traditions, what do we end up with? And that's, I, I, if, if I had to have, have a uh, kind of an analog to this, I'd say it's triathlons, you know, in the 80s and 90s. Bicycling, running, and swimming, everything was, you know, on the table or off the table, I guess, however you want to look at it. That's where we came up with aero bars. That's where we came up with disc wheels. That's where we came up with all sorts of these, you know, helmet designs and skin suits um, and ways to swim with, uh, you know, swimsuits that had amazingly, you know, almost advantage oriented fabrics. I mean, what we're doing now is we've got this renaissance in pliers where we don't have to deal with the traditions. My first video was on traditions. What is this one? This is on, let's do it. Let's figure out, you know, how to grab or encapsulate the essence of all of these good pliers into one plier. What could we do? Because we're at that point.
anyway, let me know what you think. I mean, I, I honestly, this is getting excited because exciting because we have so many amazing pliers at the same point in time. We have never been here before. So what should we do? What do we want? Where should we go? And with that, Doc out.